30 Minutes of Power. Welcome to Top 30 Minutes of Power, a podcast dedicated to encourage, educate, and inspire godly women to pursue their passions. With hosts, Jory O'Neill and Nicole Salter. Thanks for coming. Let's get ready to power up. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicole Salter, and I am your moderator for this evening. I would like to introduce our lovely speaker, Jory O'Neill. She is a mom, a friend, and most importantly, a lover of Christ. What's Let going go- on, everybody? 30 Minutes of Power, Nicole Salter, Jory O'Neill, and we have the lovely Dr. Joyce Roberts with us this evening. And we are doing a bit of a recap. Uh, the last couple of messages... I don't know about you guys, but I honestly, I go back and I listen to the replays uh, because sometimes I'm like, they came out of my mouth. Oh, snap. That sounds smart. <laughs> um, and then I have like a second quiet time off of the same material. But um, I want to take some time today. And uh, we're going to do the Facebook Live in a minute. Um, but I want to take some time today and just see see where we all are. I think too often, I know for me, like I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And I don't take enough time to stop and reflect. So today isn't, there's no format. There's no, there's a lot of research that went into personal development. Right. And I think that's something that I, I think is a necessity for all humans. We wear a lot of hats. We have a lot of different roles, especially if we are entrepreneurs or we take on any sort of um, leadership roles in our businesses. I think that all these things play a ginormous part in us um, getting burnt out real easy, real quick, right? And so I want to hear first, what, what has impacted you over the last couple of weeks? Uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna do a little deep dive. We're gonna do a little sharing. Uh, my homegirl Shahida just jumped on the call. What's going on, friend? How you doing, sis? Hey, how are you? Sorry, I had some trouble, but I'm here. Nah, you good? You good? It's always a blessing uh, to be amongst fellow like-minded humans. Um, so yeah, we just want to talk about what's impacted you over the last couple of weeks. I know a couple of people have been following. Uh, the messages that we've been doing so far. We've been talking about goals and goal setting and, and how to push toward your goals and your dreams. Uh, and last week we talked about how to keep that forward momentum, right? And ironically, after I, I did that uh, discussion, I was challenged to stop, slow down, and do a lot of reflection that I had been putting off for a minute. Uh, and I got about like six, seven pages of notes. I'm not going to go through all those today because that's just overwhelming. Uh, But I would like to open up the dialogue and the discourse for other women to just share over the last couple of weeks, what has God been kind of highlighting in your life that maybe you need to mm, slow down and and really put a magnifying glass on? So we're still talking about reaching toward our goal, reaching toward our next step, right? Hitting those milestones, developing more, but what what I'm noticing with myself is that I gain so much more clarity when I stop, do a little in, introspection, do a little reflection, right? I do my daily reflections, my Bible study, my reading, but it's different when I go deep, deep, and I'm like, why? And I get back to my why. I, just, I need sometimes just to stop, just to stop. You know how the Bible continually shares how Jesus went to a solitary place to pray and how he withdrew from the crowds and how he went off before the the sun came up, you know, while it was still dark. Um, Just those times of of just soaking, soaking God in, soaking God up. Uh, Like I need those times. And honestly, lately I've been thirsty. I've been doing a lot. God has been blessing a lot, Um, but I was still thirsty. So I want to, I want to hear from any woman on this call what are some things that you feel like right now God is exposing in your life that maybe you're you're thirsting for also 
Um, so God really has me in a place of surrender right now. Um, it's been in my will to surrender, but I have not been grounded enough. So for whatever reason, things were very cloudy for me. I had a lot going on. I was, you know, putting a lot on my plate as well. And um, God has been slowly but surely grounding me, um, helping me connect to him to surrender. And I'm feeling more at peace um, in, that sur in that surrendering of, you know, letting all my vices. Hold on, these kids. Hold on. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and so another thing is um, just being grounded and living in the moment. God has been showing me nature a lot. Um, he's been telling me to live in the moment a lot. It's been very cliche um, for years when people say live in the moment holistically. You know, I do try to meditate and stuff. And, you know, um, I, I'm not a, 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 a novice, but I'm, I'm certainly no expert. So I, I do know how to meditate, but it's been hard for me to even, you know, discipline myself to, to get into the routine of getting back to meditating like that. Um, but even without getting back to my meditation, he has shown me how to be in the moment. I don't know. It clarifies things so much because I don't, I think I missed out on a lot of my past because I didn't live in the moment. A lot of times people share things with me like, Hey, remember this, remember that? Cause I just been around with everybody doing everything. And I'd be like, no, I just really don't. But it's because I've always been anxious ridden and I've never lived in the moment. I'm either living in the past about something that happened, being upset or living in the future. Like, oh my God, what's going to happen? I got a plan for this. I got a plan for that. Not really allowing God to, you know, basically I'm, I wasn't, I would be like, well, God, if I let go of this thought, how am I going to get it back? I really, really need to. And I wasn't trusting in him. You know what I'm saying? And that's the way the, the anxiety comes from. It's like, okay. You worry about tomorrow, you know, what does the, the scripture say? Um, uh, 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 if, a, if a bird don't have to worry about tomorrow, why should you? But, you know, I'm worried about this, this, and this and that, and not just, you know, believing in him, like, trust me, it's going to come back to you. You don't regret. And so it's just, just being grounded, being in the moment, um, being to, being able to connect with my surroundings a little bit more um, intimately. Nah, thank you so much for sharing. And uh, please don't ever, like, apologize for your children. Like, this whole podcast is about women, right, empowering one another. And being a mother is it's in the line of being a woman. Uh, you know, not all women have them blessed with the gift of motherhood. Um, so never apologize for that. Uh, children are a blessing. I don't know if you can hear what's in my background right now, but I'm watching two other children. So I got four. Now I have six currently. Uh, I still haven't caught up to you, Shahida. You still, <laughs> you still beat me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Shahida, won't you share a little bit about who you are, what you do a little bit, just just to give a little context, right? When 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 you're speaking and you're talking about being grounded and you're apologizing for children in the background, like I think people people would probably appreciate your vantage point, especially knowing a little bit about your background. So if you could share briefly or as, as long-winded as you want to be, friend, like, go ahead, let us know a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm working on long-winded. You, you read my post about Toastmasters, so it's going to get me in line. Like, the long-windedness ha has to go, even though I, you know, I like to be thorough and <laughs> cover all points. But um, to try to be short, um, because I could be here all day. <laughs> but um, I'm a mother of seven, ranging from the age of two to the age of 20. Um, I am a paralegal. I have my own nonprofit uh, called Enlightened Pathways, um, where I help um, reentry clients and, and um, other populations as well uh, with business development, with career uh, vocational development, uh, basically helping people find their their purpose, what what career goals align with their uh, core values. Um, I do a lot. I run a mentorship program. I I'm a saint, of course, and um, I'm trying to go to law school to be an attorney. 
So that's where I'm currently at right now, just in, in the midst of doing. <laughs> you say you're trying to go to law school, but you 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 already you already did what you needed to do in terms of uh what and what step what what step of the process are you in right now with the law school? Are you thinking about it or? Well, no, I it well my journey, my personal journey, if if I could share, is um I've been studying to go to law school. Well, I've been wanting to be a lawyer since I was four. My mom is a lawyer. She's a, a civil rights lawyer. She's a prisoner civil rights lawyer. Um, but it's it was a lot of things um holding me back. Um and this is why I got into um, doing what I do for Enlightened Pathways, um, because I had a, a lot of run-ins with the law. Um, no felonies, no hard time, just, you know, a whole bunch of misdemeanors. And it was a lot to overcome. And I would, you know, I would keep getting all these accolades and still being branded. And so I understand how these men feel coming out. So, you know, I developed something for them to be like, well, what is the difference between me and them? Because I, I do have a husband who kind of fits that bill. And I was always curious, like, what is the difference that I was able to stay on track um, to go to law school, even though, you know, I, I did um, have those things on my record when I was younger. You know, I slowed down. Um, I got, you know, counseling, temperance, just a lot of self-development things. Um, I didn't grow up nurtured, I, you know, so I had a lot of anger and bitterness in me. And so that that did deter um, me to a lot of those um, impulsive decisions, you know, and, uh, you know, a lot of things were petty, like driving with a lot out of license, but it was still the impulsiveness. Like, you know, I just didn't feel like I um, had to follow any rules. So th I say all that to say that is why I have a, a, a heart for these people because I don't feel like that we should make a mistake and 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 be um, shunned for it for the rest of our lives. I've seen people do 25 to life. Um, my stepfather did 25 to life. My mom married him in jail. So I, I know people um, that she's worked with as clients and him and people that he knows personally that he was locked up with that, that really truly have good hearts. You know what I mean? They, 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 they've had so many accomplishments, accomplishments made even after getting, you know, coming out doing 20, 25 years. And so I know there's a lot of people who still can obtain oc occupational prestige no matter what. And this doesn't just go for reentry population. This goes for, a black community and any marginalized or un underprivileged people, you know, um, it it is is just that the knowledge and the resources are usually um, held back from those communities, so they're not able to benefit from you know those social networks or the informational wealth that you know other people are able to do. So um, me. After I had to wait that period, probably like you know six seven years, I had to wait. Um, because I didn't want to go to the ethics board and go to law school and say I just committed a crime two or three years ago. So I then I started um, studying for the LSAT, which was extremely, extremely hard. It is not an intellectual driven test. It A lot of these um, standardized tests is like, you know, kind of red tape to keep us out. So I was discouraged. I was like, am I stupid? Like, has everybody been lying to me? Because I've always been told that I was very intelligent, but I could not crack this test. This was, I'm now 39. I think I started, um, I think I started studying for the test at like 32. Um, I didn't study the first time. I never had to study for anything. I took biology, never had to, you know, as a major in school, never had to study and after I took it and got a very low score, people looked at me like, are you crazy? Like Obama had to study for it. Like, who do you think you are? So I came in there kind of arrogant, right? The funny thing is I studied and got the same score. So I was like, okay, so now I had to pay um, and, and, and all of this and still got the same score. So I was discouraged. And I, um, I let it go for about five years. So I just came back to it in 2020 after meeting with some people um, um, the Dean of Howard Law School, she, I met with her on Clubhouse. She encouraged me. She, she actually, you know, when you have a hunch about something and somebody like, you know, corroborates for you, she said, no, absolutely. It is a test for the, it, 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 it is a test geared to make you think like them. It's not for black people. And because she gave me that, I felt confidence like, okay, it's not just me. 
it was like, you know, it's like the conspiracy came full fold or whatever. And so I, I took it. Um, she gave me a, a black tutor to take it with. I took it last year. Um, and I got up the four point four. I only need like three or four points and I could not get it. I just could not get it. So um, I made I made my score and I put my application to, into law school, but very, very late. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to go in um, a cycle for this semester. So I, uh, I actually went. Um, what what jury is talking about is I did a whole semester within seven seven weeks of law school. I just finished a, a program that kind of gives you a snippet of it. Um and then I'm gonna be going to a Cooney program um that's gonna make me go into the, the 23rd cycle. So um that's where I am with it now. Um you know not getting discouraged. It was certain things that you know certain reasons why this happened and you know I know God is leading me on the right path. Amen. Thank you for sharing all that good stuff. Um, so I just want to commend you because you have every reason under the sun. Like no one will fault you if you're like, yeah, yeah, nah, I'm good. Like I got, I got seven kids. I got to worry about paying bills, right? Like I'm trying to help other humans who were in my similar situation get a, a foot in the door, right? Like give them the skills and the confidence because a lot of this stuff and I'm learning that for myself, especially this last year. It's a lot mindset. If you weren't raised, if you weren't brought up in certain environments where your mind is is shaped, and I would say more of an environment, not of not of affluence. I wouldn't even say that. I would just say that you have to have you have to have the environment necessary to give you the confidence that you can master certain things, that you can accomplish certain things, that you can attain certain things. And for many of us, our parents, either they had it and didn't know how to share it, right? Or they lacked it themselves and they couldn't give it. Um, and, and I know for me, both of my parents, they're both in, in service. So my mom is a teacher. She's been a teacher for over 30 years. My dad, he works for the post office. Before that, he was UPS. They are work with your hands, find a good government job, get a pension, stay there until you do 20, 30 years, do do basically do your time, and then and then they'll pay for the rest of your life. But I'm like, what life is there? 60 something. Like if I gotta work till I'm 60 something, I got all these different health issues and 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 poor limbs and joints and can't how, what where is the enjoyment in that? Um and I don't want to digress too much because I could. I this is so the the why, right? I started off by saying that I, I needed to kind of pause it and look at my why. Um, and thank you so much, Shahida, for sharing your why, right? It was very evident. Uh, you spoke with great passion about helping and being a champion for those who were in similar situations as you, right? Once you finally like, ah, that's what it is, bet. Now that I know the secret sauce, I'm going to share this sauce with other humans, right? And starting a nonprofit, like definitely super commendable, um, seeing the need and then filling it, right? Because it's different. A lot of us see the need. We see a lot of need daily. We see them, but we don't take those actions to fill that need and, and to fill that gap and to fill that void. So super excited again to have you here. I know you're a very busy woman. <laughs> Yeah, we had a lot of hats doing a lot of things, but uh, you, you popped in and I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I took some time and I got to my why and I was challenged. Uh, I'm working with a coach because I think everybody needs a coach. Um, Shahida is also a certified life coach. So if y'all need to holler at her for that, she do that too. Jack of all trades. Love it. I'm trying to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> um. But so I got with my coach and my coach, he was like, look, you're doing a lot. I'm like, I know. He's like, but even. And so this is the phrase I keep hearing. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. And so I can do a lot. Praise God. Right. I can. You can. Everyone can. We can do a lot. God has blessed us with so many gifts and talents and, and resources and creativity. Right. Like. Nicole not only can build her own house, she can sell it, right? Like, not too many people can do that. Just, 
All right, you know what I'm saying? Like, Joyce can put you back together, help you mend your body, and then she can show you different foods to eat, right? Different uh, exercise to do to make your body look good. So she can fix your insides and help you with your outsides, right? So we have tons and tons of gifts. But when we find that thing that sparks that passion in us, right? Like we just heard when Shahida was speaking, when we find that thing, it is, now this ain't scripture. This ain't scripture, all right? So I don't want no, no foolishness, people. I believe it is a sin if you find what your calling is in life and you don't answer. I mean, like, you don't even pick up the phone. You don't look at the phone. You don't check the call ID. You just go about living your life with that bad boy on silent. Like, that's sin. God didn't give you, God didn't give you that. He didn't give you that for you to be selfish with it. All right, so I'm off, I'm off that box. I'm off my soapbox. Um, so digging into finding my why, uh, I wrote, uh, and I'm going to share some of my journal with y'all because, listen, ain't nothing, ain't nothing to hide. What's the hide? Ain't nothing. Um, and so he gave me this kind of, um, I would say, a sentence starter. And there were blanks in the sentence starter. And he, he told me, he's like, look, I need you to sit in prayer. And you sit in prayer. And you sit in meditation. Uh, it's different when you get coached by a Christian. Let me tell you, people. Woo! It's different. It, it hit different. Um, you know what I mean? But he's like, I need you to sit, like for real, sit with God. Um, he's like, you know what, matter of fact, I'm not gonna tell you who it is because I don't want you thinking that you could get a free session. But he's like, I'm gonna meet with you for free tomorrow. I was like, oh snap. Like <laughs> he's like, because I really need you to get this. And so I woke up and I hadn't done this in a minute. I woke up at 4:30 in the morning, no alarm. Jesus is like, just hey, let's let's go to work. And I'm like, all right. This happens every day, people. I don't answer every day, but it happens every day. Every day. Since January, every day. You can, you can wake up at 4.30, but so long, people. <laughs> at some point, you got to be like, all right, all right, mm, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry. And that's me. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. Sometimes I'm like, God, can I just want to sleep. Like, it was a late night. I'm going through a lot of them. And, and that's the silly part. Like, he's like, I know you're going through a lot, fool. That's why I'm waking you up this early. Because you, you need to be in my word more. You need to be praying to me more. Can I ask you something? Does he ever wake you up a little earlier than that? Sometimes 3.30, yeah. Okay. Can I share something with you? I like sharing. Okay. So there was a time that... um. I was really consecrated. I mean, really consecrated uh, um, a little bit before a time where some tragedy fell um, on me and my children and my family. Um, but before that, I was very, very consecrated. And God woke me up at 3 to 3.30 a.m. every morning when the demonic realm is most active. And he called on me to pray. And the, the, the amount of intercession I did at that time and I used to go, I used to anoint my kid's head with oil. I used to anoint the house. I used to pray for the whole nation. I just used to pray, 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 pray. But at that time, God was channeling so much wisdom to me. And I, I, I used to, you know, joke like, God, are you going to give me back? Like, but I used to say, God, this is too much. Like you're giving me too much. I actually remember having conversations with God because he was streaming so much in me. So. With that being said, if he pulls on you a little earlier, think about waking up. Amen. Amen. So uh, thank you for that. I appreciate that because uh, good stuff happened when I woke up um, that early. And so I'm going to share with you the beginning part of what I wrote. And you know me, I, I always got practicals. Even if I don't write them down, like they're, they're things, they're tangibles, I believe, because it's, it's one thing to hear something nice, hear something good. It resonates with you like, wow, that was inspiring. That was encouraging. That's nice. All right, so what that look like for me, though? How can I put that into practice? Because Jesus gave us what God gave us 66 love letters, 66, 66 books in the Bible, 66 love letters. And in each of these is a way for us to live practically, to apply it to our lives right now. We don't have to wait. We don't have, there's no conditions we can apply the bible to our lives 
Um, and so even though I know oftentimes I don't quote scriptures or anything like that, there are scriptures that I do want to reference today, but I got practicals. I don't have three practicals. I apologize. I got seven. <sighs> it is what it is. Listen, we gonna rock with it. Uh, so what God, what God revealed to me was that, uh, and I'm gonna read this verbatim from my journal. I'm not gonna cut anything out. I'm gonna be super, super transparent with you, right? So it says, I've been pretending that I'm guided by God when in fact I have taken back the reins a long time ago. The impact of this has been shallow and surfacey, uncommitted living. And the whole time I've been acting this way, what's been missing is any sense of being whole, confident, secure, and honest. Knowing this, the possibility I'm creating is the possibility of being more authentic in Christ's life. Now, mind you, I wrote this Thursday morning. Like, today is Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday. This is a recent entry, August 11, 2022. So all this stuff I just shared is, is what what's happening right now. This isn't like a year ago, a, a month ago. Like, nah, this is not even a whole week ago, right? And the scriptures that kept coming up for me were James 1, James 1, 2 through 8. Uh, and it talks about being double-minded. And so I went through this whole life. Oh, I did it's such a oh, exhaustive Bible search. And I miss times like this, just digging into the word of God. Like, God, what does it mean to be wavering? What does it mean to be undecisive? What is and and it just kept like, what is what does it mean? What does it mean? And all these scriptures kept popping up. Uh, but I'm gonna read for you the definition of double-minded. Uh it says double-minded or wavering in mind means to be undecided. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's scripture. The second part of this definition was that double-mindedness is marked by hypocrisy and insincerity. I was like, mm, I don't like that. I don't, I don't, I work hard not to be a hypocrite, but I'm like, if this is what God is sharing with me, that this is, this is what I've been doing because I have not allowed him to take full control to like full control. I give up some control and then I'm like, all right, this is too scary. God, you're leading me into unknown territory. I don't like it. No, 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 no. And then, and then, and then I pull back and I shrink back. And this has been a consistent theme in my life since I was 19. I remember it. Like, I journal. I got, I got journals for days. I remember at 19 asking God to take the wheel. And I had the one day. It wasn't like a year. I had one day of utter surrender to God, right? And I think that's, that's profound, that, that that's the first thing you share, Shahida, about surrendering. And that's the thing that God is kind of, made large in your life right now, right? The, the fact that you need to surrender. But I remember at 19, praying God, take the wheel, Jesus, take the wheel. Like, you know, I will do whatever you want me to do. I'm gonna go wherever you want me to go, say what you want me to say. And then God was like, get on your bike and ride to the park. I was like, God is hot. <laughs> it's hot. I was like, all right, all right, all right, all right. I just, I just said, I'll do what you, all right. So I went to the park, I get to the park. And it's full of like old men. And I'm like, oh God, I I don't wanna, I don't wanna even I'm 19. Oh dude, I don't want to evangelize the old men. They look drunk. I don't, I don't wanna no. I mean they need Jesus too, but can you send some other old man to go? <laughs> I don't want to talk to them. Uh, but they're playing chess. Now, a lot of people don't know, but I'm a geek. Don't tell nobody. Um, and I love me some chess. I love me some chess. I love me some chess. So I go over and I'm talking to these old men and they're like, what? You know chess? Oh, you know this move? And so I'm sitting there talking to these old dudes at 19 years old in the park, strange men, um, a large, large gaggle of them, like not even like a couple, like this is a large number of, of old, like this is what y'all do in the middle of the day. Y'all just go pull up to the park, play chess, that's cool. Um, but I, I, I just share with them the good news about God. This is how God is, is transforming my life. This is, and, and, the response i was just like like they was actually listening to me I, usually when i go to a group of older humans 
They're like, ah, you don't know nothing. When I was your age, you know, it started getting into those conversations, but they were actually listening. I was like, what? And I saw a couple of guys who did have drinks slowly, like, pour their drinks out on the side. <laughs> like, they were convicted. I'm like, all right, God, okay, this ain't bad, all right? I'm helping change at least one day. One day you didn't take a drink. One day, at least the one hour I was with you, you didn't take a drink. All right, amen. That, that could be a step in the right direction, right? So... Uh, and then he's like, all right, go to go to the gazebo. So I go to the gazebo, and there's a woman sitting there. And she got, like, the shopping cart and, like, bags and bags and bags. And I'm just like, God, like, I think this woman is without a home. I believe um, I don't have any money. I don't have no job. But how am I supposed to help her? Because Jesus met the needs of the people first. And then when he met their needs, they were able to hear the word of God. So, all right, God, all right. So I just went over there. It was an angel, bro. Like, I wasn't there for her. She was there for me. Like, she started speaking to me, like, speaking to my spirit, like, in ways I hadn't I hadn't experienced ever before. It was my birthday. My birthday. My 19th birthday. And I shared with this woman, I was in a park so long, I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to go because I have church tonight. I would love for you to come to church with me. She's like, where is it? And I mind you, I'm like, I, I think she's homeless. So I don't even know how she's getting there. Uh, I don't have a car. I'm hoping somebody goes to pick me up. Like, I don't have a job. I can't give you bus fare. This is like early 1990-something. Uh, there's no Uber. There's no Lyft. Like, uh, uh. So I was like, here's the address, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> here's what time it is. Um, Preferably, you can make it. Fast forward, there was a whole bunch of family stuff I'm going to get into, but my mom comes to church. The first time she's ever come to church with me, there's a little issue. We'll talk about that in another episode. Um, first time she ever comes to church with me, and this woman, she shows up to church, dressed to the nine, smelling fine, with gifts. They were the S. She had gifts. This woman brought me gifts. For my birthday, and share that she was so encouraged that I stopped and talked to her because most people don't. They ignore her, they bypass her, they keep it moving because she looks destitute or whatever. Um, and I was just like, wow, God, like that was an amazing day. That was so encouraging. Oh, my spirit is, oh, wow, God, such impact. Oh, and just, just a couple of hours. Oh, God, imagine. Living every day like that. And then my imagination, imagine living every day like that. And I was like, mm, no, thank you. Mm, mm, I don't want it. I don't want it. That's too much. At 19? Oh, my gosh. It's too too much, too early, too young, too soon. Um, And honestly, like, sometimes I tell myself that now. Like, when people speak, they speak about the things that they see me doing. I'm like, no, 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 I'm too young. I'm not 60. Like, <laughs> Cause you're supposed to be 60 or like 50 or 40 or at least like a preacher's wife, or, right? Like you're supposed to have these titles, these accolades, at least these years on earth before you start making an impact. And listen, folks, I made it tell you like, oh, that is a lie. Them is lies. Them is lies from the evil one. Don't listen. If you got breath, you can make an impact doesn't have to be on a grand scale. It can start in your house. It should start in your house. Start making an impact on your family, on your kids. Branch out from there. Uh, rake your neighbor's grass. Uh, uh, you know, shovel the lawn, whatever. Like, if God has given you the ability to speak, to think, and to use your limbs, use all of them for his glory and for the improvement of others. I think the thing that blows my mind a lot is that folks they they hustle they hustle to get people in the pews they hustle to get people to join that church the hustle to get people right to, to buy into their concepts but i'm like what if we put that same energy and we hustle toward loving people what if we put that same energy toward improving our community what if we put that same hustle mentality Towards sharing the love of God with other people, right? And everybody has their their niche, 
customer, right? Their their group that they want to focus on because it's try to focus on everybody, it's very overwhelming, right? Um, so like Shahida, the the population that's re-entering into the, the workforce or just coming out of, you know, being maybe incarcerated, um, not even maybe physically, but mentally as well, right? Marginalized societies, I don't think people understand that there is a, a very large population of brown and black people that's filling up these prisons. Right, um, the school to prison pipeline is something that I I'm very passionate about. Uh, just doing my work in restorative justice in the school system, um, and seeing how many black and brown kids get suspended for minor infractions, and how those infractions then sully their record in school, and how that you know what I mean, like, and that leads to something, and to the point where now I just feel like I'm bad, I'm no good, I can't, I can't do anything right. So let me just live up to this prophecy of me being bad or ended up in prison, right? And so that's your lane. My lane, honestly, I, I want to touch, I want to impact, I want to encourage any and every woman who has given up hope that they can be used, who has given up hope that they are useful Period. Not for God, not for business, not period. Hope is hope. Right. And so I truly and honestly believe that my gift is encouraging. God's giving me the gift of encouragement. What does that look like? I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I know I talk a lot. I know how to speak. So I'm, I'm going to run a podcast. Bet I'm gonna do a YouTube channel. Bet I'm gonna go on stages and tell you whatever I need to do to capture your attention so that I can instill hope in you to give you courage and a couple of practicals to get you from point A to point B. Amen. As long as I have breath and a sound man, I'm gonna get it done. So here are the seven practicals for you to go from indecision to productivity. All right, so seven practicals go from indecision to productivity. Where does this come from? Again, I shared about how I was double-minded. I was wavering. And the opposite of that is pure in heart. Okay, so continuing to live in a double-minded way brings forth death and separation from God, others, and ourselves. And if you think about it, the Bible talks about no man can serve two masters. He would either love one and hate the other. Like if you think there's always a dichotomy, it's money, God, uh, self, family, right? And, and there's always this, this battle back and forth. But so there are seven things that you can do to make sure that you don't stay stuck in your thoughts and stay in this double-minded space, but move to productivity. So the first thing, Observe your thoughts from a distance. And Shahida hit the head on the nail on the head. The way that we can observe our thoughts from a distance is by daily meditation. Now, you could YouTube how to meditate. There's little chants, there's charms, there's different ways to meditate. Um, but daily meditation, stopping and focusing on what it is that I'm thinking about. What is it that I'm afraid of? What is it that I'm worried about? What is it? Look at it from afar, objectively. Like, all right, does that make sense? Nah, that's, I'm worried about seven things that ain't never happened. Or, ain't, you know, possibly got, nah, that's, all right, that's a lot of time wasted. That's a lot of energy. We're, we're dead, but not, nah, that's it, right? And so after we've identified those things through meditation, two, write them down. Right? Write down your thoughts to get them out of your head. For me, when I see things on paper, I'm like, well, that just sounds, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't sound good at all. I don't know. Like, when he had me write out th that that sentence, I was like, ah, God, like, wow, that's, ooh, ah, really? That's, ooh, mm, ah, man. In my head, I could think another thought and push it away, but when I wrote it down, it became concrete. When I wrote it down, it became real. The second way is to write it down. Third thing, you got to designate some no thinking time. <laughs> like, for me, bless you, I get stuck in my thoughts 
way too often. I just get, what if, what if, what we got to like set a time and be like, all right, I'm not going to, mm, no, nope, I'm not going to think about that. Instead, I'm going to do something physical. I'm going to do something active, right? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's, an, there's a time and season for everything. It has to be a time where you stop thinking about stuff. Just sit and meditate. That don't mean binge on TV, right? That don't mean go scrolling on the Facebook or the social media. It means to just find time to get active and not think about something. Exercise is a great way to do that. Go take a walk. Uh, go pray. Just stop thinking. Um, and number four ties into that. Distract yourself if you have to. All right. So in order for you to stop thinking, sometimes you got to distract yourself. So for me today, I didn't want to think about stuff. I started painting my door. Husband took the door off the hinges. I took it outside and I was painting. And it took me about 30 minutes because I'm not a good painter. I realized <laughs> it's not my gift. <laughs> it was lines. I kept going up like seven times. Nobody told me you're supposed to wait till the drive before you put on the second and third coat. So now I got like clumps and I'm like, oh. So yeah, so distract yourself. Number five, focus on what you can do right now. Don't get stuck in all the thoughts, shoulda, woulda, couldas. Oh, man, what? No, 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 no. What can you do right now? So I had to think about that, right? I was like, what can I do right now to show up authentically? What can I do right now to give God back control? What can I do right now? And again, if I think about it like, oh, well, if I do it today, then am I going to be able to do it tomorrow? No, no, no. What can you do right now? What can you do? Not what, what you should do, what you should have done, what hopefully you will do. What can you do right now? All right, number six. You have to respect your own opinion. What does that mean? If you think something and you know that it's not in alignment with your values, you got to respect your own opinion, right? So if you keep overthinking and overthinking and overthinking and overthinking, you're going to get to a point where you don't trust yourself. And then that leads to more indecisiveness. Well, what if I do this and then it don't work? Oh, man. So, uh, but all right, stop, 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 stop. Is this in alignment with your values? I bet. Is this in alignment with your why? Bet. Is this in your wheelhouse? All right, let's go. Let's do it. We done. Like you ain't uh, stop all the overthinking. All right. And number seven. Know K N O W that you can change a wrong decision. Ah, right, you made a bad decision. I right, bet. God gives you life and breath tomorrow. Fix it. Do something different. Alter it. Modify it. It's not the end of the world. It's okay. And I think that that is what held me from like accelerating and growing and, and, and going all in on anything. So January, God bless Nicole. Uh, Nicole and I, we started doing a Monday night Bible talk for women. And it was just, it was, it was just me and her and Joyce, I think. <laughs> <Just three months. laughs> um, and then more women started coming and we started inviting more women and hearing different perspectives and getting more feedback from people. And gosh, it was so good. And we were like, oh, this is so nice to share with other humans. And so I started uploading the raw footage to YouTube and people were watching it and they were commenting and not just in English. It was other countries. I was like, oh, snap, like people, other countries want to hear us talk. That's crazy. Um. And so we decided to turn into a podcast. And this is this is where we are, right? It's August now. We've been doing this since January, faithfully showing up every Monday. Um, I don't know if somebody's paying the code, but nobody's paying me every week. Not yet, at least. We we gonna get there, but <laughs> uh, but that we don't do this for money. Like we do this because we honestly feel that God has given us the ability to encourage other people. And if we have breath, if we have life, let's just give. Let's just give. God will do the returning. I'm not worried about that. But if I can inspire and encourage one woman to have hope who didn't have it before, 
and I'm living in my purpose. So moral of the story for me, I have to be comfortable with being wrong and to knowing to know that with more knowledge, I can change over time. It does not have to be a quick fix. I do not have to do everything tomorrow or yesterday. Slow and steady will win the race one day, one moment, one decision at a time. Jory, can I interject for a second? I love interjections. I love sharing and interjections. Those are my two favorite ladies. So in the very beginning, you asked, um, what are some things that stood out to us over the past few weeks? And you know, sometimes you look at things and you're like, no, nah, this has to be a coincidence. And sometimes it's like, you know what? I'm not giving coincidence to glory today. I'm just going to give it to God, right? And so for the past two weeks, my pastor has been talking about things that we talk about on Monday. Now, I'm not close to my pastor. I've dealt with church politics in the past and this time around, I'm like, nope, I, I know your first and your last name. I don't want to know nothing else. <laughs> I don't want to leave, leave it at that. You know, people have asked, oh, I heard you singing in the pews. When are you going to go? No, I'm not singing anymore. Not, not until God grabs me by my hair and throws me on the stage. Literally, I'm no, mm -mm. I'm sitting back. Not that my last church was bad. You know what I mean? My, my last church was great. And I love my pastor and his family dearly. However, I I just want to sit and receive at this time in my life. This this is the time for me receiving. You know, I mean, I'm giving while I'm here, but as far as church goes, this is the time for me receiving. And so I say all of that to say um, things that really stood out to me the past few weeks and things that my pastor has also been discussing are making sure to set a goal, right? Um. Lately, God has just been showing me how easy it is for me to be distracted. Like I will make a plan Sunday night and then Monday morning, plan one and two, go through because that's wake the kids up, get them dressed, take them to school. Well, plans one through three, they, they work, right? But then when I get home, everything else that I was supposed to do goes out the door. I take, I come into my house through the garage and it's like, oh, this section is messy. Maybe I should organize it right now. And in the middle of organizing it, God is like, this was not on the schedule today. And I'm like, oh yeah, it wasn't on the schedule today. You know, so he's definitely showing me how easy it is for me to be distracted. Um, My pastor also said, write things down, write down the scriptures that you need to remember when you are in times of trouble. We always talk about write things down, write down your goals, write down your vision, write down things that you want to do. Tackle one thing at a time. Rome was not built in a day. They did not tear down the walls of Jericho in one day. You don't have to do everything today. Um, if you mess up, which I do daily, I am not a perfect person. I mess up every single day. Dust yourself off, get off the floor, and start again. <laughs> you know, don't sit and wallow because you messed up. You know what I mean? And another thing God has been showing me is when there are times where I do like ghetto TV. I'm sorry. I do watch Love and Hip Hop. But God is showing me more and more like the hour that you're spending to watch these people live their lives and make money, right? Because that's why they on the show you could be learning something new. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm watching people make money instead of me doing something for myself to make money, right? And so I I try and like sneak it in and maybe I'll fold the clothes while I'm watching it because I'm still being productive, right? But, <laughs> but God is still showing me like different things in my life where I'm just wasting time. I'm wasting time. Time is flying past me. These people on TV are making money and I'm still sitting here, not necessarily living paycheck to paycheck, but I can't take my children on a cruise tomorrow. 
you know? And so I do want to say thank you to you for just being real and being authentic and having the guts to share your story. Because although your story is not one of pain, misery, and heartache, right? It's still something that people are going through. And it's still something that people can learn from. And I think a lot of us, when we go through things, we don't use it to edify someone else. We keep it in, we hide it, and we we take it more like we're ashamed that this has happened to us instead of using it to help someone else grow. And that is what God wants us to do. He wants us to use our lives and our experiences to help other people grow. Shahida, I am so grateful for your story because girl, honey, child, listen, I'm going to try to be like you one day. <laughs> okay. I, I find it very difficult to sit down at a computer for hours at a time. I'm getting better, but I'm not there yet. So I can't even imagine studying for the for, for an LSAT, let alone having to study for the real estate exam that I took. <laughs> okay. It, it is, it is very difficult for me. So I do commend you for at this stage in your life. Mind you, I only got two kids. So I mean, I, I, my hat, my hair, my head goes off to you with seven, <laughs> especially with the different age ranges. I have my nephews here this week and I'm like, um, are y'all going home today? Are y'all going home tomorrow? Uh, when are they flying in to come and pick you up? Because I am done. <laughs> so hats off to you. I am so glad that you were able to share your story today. Keep on doing what you are doing because it is great. And you know what? It's going to edify many people. Not only one, not only two, but many. <laughs> Joyce, don't make me cry. <laughs> So, uh, Jory, I definitely just want to say thank you. Thank you for joining me on this crazy ride that we are on. And you know what? Because God is in control, things are going to be great. Hey Amen. Shahida, you came off mute. So I'm going I'm to give the floor to you. This is anybody listening to this. This is more than 30 minutes of power. This is, this is an hour of power now. OK, so just be grateful. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Shahida, yeah, what's good, baby? Yeah, so she, so she just bounced back um a revelation right to me because even as she spoke about um telling my story, um which I just got used to doing, mind you, um I just got, you know, I was following somebody who they're really they're pretty much of a rebel. They call themselves a, a social advocate, but I realized that they when they told their story of you know how they grew up and 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 the trauma that they faced they would get so much more attention and I'm and, and God dealt with me and was like you got to tell your story and even what I just disclosed it took a long time because you know there's shame and stuff like that that's attached with a lot of the mistakes we made but when you just said that there's so much of my story that I know can help people there's layers um, that I've been struggling to be transparent with, but I know people need to hear it because, um, like you said, we don't go through it in vain. We go through these things to be a testimony to somebody um, in some way, shape, or form. Sometimes it's not manifested directly, you know, um, but just in the way we we leave our mark on this world. So thank you for that. So that that definitely brought a revelation to me as well. So I'm going to be working on that. It's it's going to come. Don't don't focus on the story to tell because you know what? Everybody doesn't have to know every single story. You know what I mean? They need to know the stories that are going to help them. You know? So I I would say get comfortable speaking about yourself. And honey, I'm talking to you just as much as I'm talking to me <laughs> because I need to get comfortable with talking about my story also you know there's there's so many different walks that I've had in life and just to give you a, a small tidbit I live in a house in Florida with my husband my two children 
his grandmother and my mom. Granted, the house is a large house because there's so many adults here, but you can only imagine sometimes the, the things that happen here with all of the adults that have an opinion in my house, you know, and not everybody is going to hear every story. Like I just learned that one of my neighbors who lived down the street, she also lives with her mother-in-law and we were like, oh my gosh, like our lives are so similar, <laughs> you know? And so, I mean, it's, it's great that you are getting comfortable talking about yourself, but don't, don't put too much emphasis on sharing every single story. The stories that people need to hear, they're going to come out. They're going to come out and you're going to edify them with just that small section of your life. They don't have to know what happened when you were two, what happened when you were five. They probably only want to know what happened on July 29th, if that is a significant day in your life. You know what I mean? So like I said, you are doing a great job. Stay before God and let God lead the way. Let God lead the, the conversations that you're going to have and share the different stories that you're going to need to share. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to do my best to land this plane. Uh, the last thing I want to share is. So I went through and I, I read a, diff, a lot of different concordances or whatever, but the part that stuck out to me the most. Is the description of the double minded person, and this is where I want to leave people off with. Um, so the double minded person is restless and confused in his thoughts actions, and behavior. They are always in conflict with themselves. One torn by such inner conflict can never lean with confidence on God and his gracious promise. I share that because while I do show up, right, Nicole, we both show up, um, unless God is at the center and the forefront of why we're doing what we're doing, how we're doing what we're doing, empowering us to keep doing what we're doing, we will be laboring in vain. Just as anyone who desires to go after their goal, go after their dream, who believes that they're living and walking in their purpose, if you're not able to lean fully on God because of doubt, because of uncertainty, because of double-mindedness, because of fear, because of faithlessness, because of lack, I'm going to ask you, same thing I was asked, check yourself. Because that thing ain't going to grow. I'm going to tell you this right now. It ain't going to grow. You can put as much water and manure as you want to on that bad boy. If you ain't got them roots deep. If they ain't centered in Christ. It ain't going to grow. So stop. Take a pause. Take a beat. Take a break. Reflect. Sit. Meditate. Figure out what needs to happen in order for you to depend and rely fully, 100% on God. If that means removing some things, if that means adding some things, if that means changing your environment, do whatever you need to do to make sure you are planted deeply, fully, and securely in Christ our Lord. And with that said, ladies, this has been 30 Minutes of Power, Jory O'Neill. Go Salta, Shahida, my girl. Thanks for joining us. And Joyce, as always, silent in the background, but mighty on the chat. Appreciate you, sis. Po was saying about um, Shahida. She's like <laughs> amazing, man. It's just, yeah. It's, it's so great just being on these calls, Jory, because you hear people from different backgrounds. Like I never would have known unless being on this call, but it's just great. Just do you with your LSATs. I had a friend. It's tough, just like you said. So I get exactly what you're saying. But once you make it, you're gonna be such an inspiration to like all, like all the people. Like that's that's word. I I'm happy. Uh, and that's Dr. Joyce Roberts. All right, so she's a black doctor heading an entire department down there in Delaware, overseeing the next generation of doctors. That's right, training them up right. Black what, woman in what? charge. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With that said, folks, it's the 30 Minutes of Power. 
Until next time, be an empowered woman who uses her powers to empower others. Peace. Thank you for listening. We pray you have been empowered by the message. If you'd like to be a part of the conversation, join our free Facebook group, AZ Iron Sharpens Iron. Every Monday, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, meet us back here for another session of empowerment. Share this episode with another woman who needs to be empowered. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, be an empowered woman using your power to empower others. Don't admit the power.